So one of the arteries we're going to look at is the lingual artery. So again, we have the common carotid artery, which is coming out of our aorta, out of our heart, and it's pumping blood away because it's an artery, A for away, it's pumping blood away from the heart and it's going into the head and neck area. It's the external carotid artery that we're most interested in because this is the one that innervates or supplies blood to the mouth and the teeth and all that and the tongue. So one of the ones we're going to look at is the lingual artery, lingual for tank, and this is the lingual artery right here, which has several branches. So let's look at that in more detail. So the lingual artery comes off of the external carotid artery, and that's, that's what we saw. So this is the external carotid artery right here, and the lingual artery just comes out from the external carotid artery, and it supplies many different areas the dorsal lingual artery, the deep lingual artery, the sublingual artery. So when we're looking at the dorsal lingual artery, that's this one right here, and what it says in this slide is that it uh, um, supplies a deep posterior part of the tongue. So dorsal means top of the tongue, ventral means at the bottom of the tongue. So dorsal means it's supplying, this is the, this is the front of your tongue, this is the back of your tongue, so posterior means back, so it's giving blood to this area over here. Deep lingual artery is the deep anterior of the tongue, so the anterior of the tongue is the front of the tongue, so it's giving blood supply to the front of the tongue. Then we have the sublingual artery, which is this one over here, the sublingual artery, and that is um, innervating or sending blood to the ventral surface, the bottom of the tongue, and also the floor of the mouth. So if you lift up the tongue, you'll see the floor of the mouth, and the blood supply from there is coming from the sublingual artery. So basically, so the, where does the lingual, or what does the lingual artery supply? It supplies, or it gives blood to the tongue and the tissue in the floor of the mouth. Okay, so here we see the lingual artery, and it's helping supply blood to the tongue, which means it's supplying the top of the tongue, the bottom of the tongue, and even the floor of the mouth. Here's another example. So here's the external carotid artery, and one branch is the lingual artery, and it's supplying the bottom, the tongue area. Let's look at the facial artery next. So the facial artery, so here we looked at the lingual artery, and then we're going to look at the facial artery, and the facial artery is right here, and you can see it, there's like three different branches, right? So the facial artery kind of travels all across the face, and it ends really at the inner corner of the eye. And what it does is it gives blood to um, the skin, okay, of our face, and all the muscles of facial expression. So last time we looked at all the different types of muscles uh, in our face. You know, the reason why our muscles can move and the muscles are, you know, alive and innervated is because of the facial artery. So the facial artery is providing blood to this these areas over here. I can find my mouse. Okay, here we go. So this is your facial artery. Now we're going to look at the maxillary artery. And the maxillary artery is actually a very interesting artery because there are 15 branches, 15 branches of this artery. So let's look at this in more detail. So here is your maxillary artery. And what, do you see all those stems or all those branches that are coming out of these arteries? There's 15 of them. So there's a lot of branches that's coming out from the maxillary artery. And if we look at the maxillary arteries, or the branches, rather, of the maxillary artery, they all kind of come out of this area here. So this is a skull. You're looking at it, at it from an upside-down view. This is the teeth. This is the mandible. So we're looking at it from an upside-down view. And basically, this maxillary artery kind of threads through this area over here, which is known as the infratemporal fossa. So infra means below. Temporal, if you remember the temporal bone, um, if this is an area that's just underneath the temporal bone, and a fossa is like a depression or like an indentation. Okay, so it's like a depression. And this is where the arteries are um, intertwined in or are you know, put in this area over here. And there's so many different types of um, um, arteries that comes or branches off of the maxillary artery. So the first one we're going to look at is the inferior alveolar artery. So let's analyze this word. Inferior means below. So that means below. If it's superior, it will be above the teeth. Inferior means it's below. So below the teeth or below the mouth. Um, so inferior alveolar artery. So if we look um, 
over here, inferior alveolar artery. So we have the external carotid artery and then the maxillary artery. And the maxillary artery has one branch that takes it down and supplies the inferior alveolar artery, which supplies all this area over here. So it basically branches off to all the mandibular teeth, the bone in this area as well. It also gives um, a feeling and innervation to like the mandibular lip and the chin. So you can see this inferior alveolar artery is quite a big artery and it's innervating, supplying blood to all this area over here. This is really important to know because in dentistry, we um, dentists can give uh, freezing uh, to people. So if they need any dental work then, before the dental work, they'll freeze that area so that uh, the patient doesn't feel any pain. And so it's important to know which arteries they're trying to freeze because knowing that will let you know what's frozen in the mouth. So for example, if we, because we were looking at the inferior alveolar artery, a dentist could do an inferior alveolar block, which means that they would numb somewhere around here. And when they numb this area here, everything over here would be numb. So we won't have any feeling. So if you look at the inferior alveolar block, this is a block that's blocking the inferior alveolar artery or a blood vessel. They numb this entire thing. So they numb all the mandibular teeth because that's what this artery supplies. And they also numb the chin, the lip rather, as well. So this, you feel numb if you get the inferior alveolar block. Let's look at a different one. What if we look at um, anterior superior alveolar artery? So again, we have the maxillary artery, and it has, as we said, it has 15 different branches. So one branch could be the anterior superior alveolar artery, and that's right here. And it's called anterior because it's supplying the anterior teeth. It's called superior because it's superior. It's the one above. If it was inferior, it would be, if it was a, referring to the teeth below, the mandible teeth, it would be called inferior. But because it says superior, we know it's looking at the top teeth and it's looking at the anterior top teeth, the front top teeth. So if I wanted to do a block, which is called an anterior superior alveolar block, if I wanted to numb this area over here, I would do this type of um, block, which means I would inject somewhere in this area. I would inject um, somewhere in this area and I would numb all the blood supply over here. All the arteries here would get numb so that I don't have any feeling in this area over here so that we can do dental work and I won't have any feeling. There's also something called the middle superior alveolar. It's pretty self-explanatory. The middle refers to the middle teat, right? The middle teat over here in this quadrant is the middle. And superior, we know it means the maxillary teat, the above teat. So if I wanted to do a middle superior alveolar block, I would numb somewhere in this area here and I won't have any feeling in this area over here. Same thing with posterior superior alveolar artery. So that's this one over here. So the maxillary artery also branches off to the posterior superior alveolar artery and that numbs the posterior teeth, okay, the back teeth. So I could do a block or the dentist could do a block somewhere in that area and I would lose feeling. Um, I would feel numb in this area over here. So these are just different examples of different blocks or different injections that um, a dentist can do. And then based on you know, where they uh, inject it, you would feel numb in specific areas. Now, as we're, since we're still looking at the maxillary artery and we know that there's so many branches, uh, some other branches are listed over here. So we have the temporal branch and the temporal branches over here. And it basically gives feeling or innervates and supplies the temporal muscle. We have the, uh, remember the masseter muscle, which is um, a muscle of masticate, a muscle for chewing. It also has its own blood supply, which is right over here, the masseteric branch, right? So there's many different um, branches that stems out of the maxillary artery and they supply different areas. Um, another thing to note is we have a palate and our palate is also supplied by blood vessels so um, there's something called the greater palatine artery so greater palatine artery is right here and it supplies the hard palate which is the front 
We also have a soft palette, which is towards the back, and it's the lesser palleting area, lesser palleting area that supplies the soft palette. So hard palette is greater palleting artery, soft palette is innervated or supplied by the lesser palatine artery. So I would, I would um, recommend you guys to know which arteries supply what. Okay, we also looked at this before, but the maxillary artery, it also um, has different branches, and so we know that some of them can supply the posterior teeth, some of them can supply the middle superior alveolar artery, and some of them can supply um, the anterior teeth through the anterior superior alveolar artery. There's also something called the infraorbital artery. And so if you remember, let's see if I have a better picture, um, this hole over here is um, known as your infra or, um, infraorbital foramen. So infra means below, orbital refers to the eye. So we can have, there's an artery that comes out from this foramen or comes out from this canal, and that is known as your infraorbital artery which is this one right here that comes out. So your nose is over here. Um, it comes up from this side. This is your eye in this area here. 